Hello everyone, if you're watching this video you're probably curious about what the difference between GMRS and amateur or ham radio is. Hopefully I can clear up some of those questions for you. Today's video will be discussing the differences in use and requirements between GMRS and ham or amateur radio. First off, let's start with GMRS. GMRS, or General Mobile Radio Service, is a licensed radio service that is mostly used for two-way, vocal, short-distance communications. It's a land mobile FM UHF or ultra high frequency radio that is used with handheld devices, repeater systems, and of course mobile radios. Ham or amateur radio is generally used as a hobby to contact other operators at long distance, but can also function in an official capacity in emergency situations where normal methods of communications have failed. It generally uses repeaters and even satellites to enable long range communications, but they also offer handheld and mobile versions. Let's talk about the frequencies that both of these systems use. Now, GMRS has a narrow range of frequency bands from 462 to 467 megahertz, and they're generally channelized. The number of frequency channels for GMRS sums to about a total of 30 channels, and among these 30 channels, 22 are shared with FRS, or Family Radio Service, which is commonly used in your run-of-the-mill walkie-talkies from Midland, Motorola, and so on. This allows the users of the two radio services to actually communicate with each other. Meanwhile, Amateur has a wide range from 1.6 MHz to 27 MHz, although the ideal frequency during daytime is from 15 to 27 MHz, and at nighttime it's generally the 1.6 to 15 MHz range for long distance communications. As a result of the large number of radio bands, the radio one can use with ham radio service can vary greatly. However, for GMRS, the narrow range of frequency creates a lot of restrictions for the end user. So let's talk about the license requirements for both of these. While both of them require a license, the situation varies a bit for the two services. For GMRS, getting a hold of the license is surprisingly easy. You just pay the license fee to the FCC, which is about $70, and you generally get it without any hassle. The license is good for 10 years and also applies to immediate family members. You're limited to GMRS channels and transmitting power on handheld mobile devices, and the handheld power is generally limited to half a watt to 5 watts depending on the frequency. Mobile units and stations, such as repeaters and mobile units and vehicles, are limited to 50 watts and 15 watts respectively. However, with ham radio, you must pass one or sometimes even more than one test to qualify for the appropriate license. Amateur radio has three distinct license levels that offer varying levels of use and access. These tests often cost $15 for each, and the study material is usually about between the price of $20 and $40. Let's start with the lowest level license, and the easiest to obtain. The Technician Class License is the entry-level license of choice for most new ham radio operators. To earn the Technician License, it requires passing one examination totaling 35 questions on radio theory, regulations, and operating practices. These tests are offered by some ham radio clubs and other FCC approved locations. The license gives access to all amateur radio frequencies above the 30 MHz range, allowing these licensees to the ability to communicate locally and most often within North America. It also allows for some limited privileges on the HF band, also called shortwave, used for international communications. Next on the list is the general license. This is probably one of the more popular options because of all the features that it grants you access to. The general class license grants some operating privileges on all amateur radio bands and operating modes. This license opens the door to worldwide communications and earning the general class license requires passing a 35 question examination and you have to pass the technician examination as well. Last on the list, and the highest level currently available for ham or amateur radio, is the Amateur Extra License. The Amateur Extra License conveys all available U.S. amateur radio operating privileges on all bands and all nodes. So it's kind of like the do-all, end-all, say-all. Earning the license is more difficult. It requires passing a thorough 50-question examination. The Extra Class Licensees must also have passed all previous licensed written examinations. With GMRS and Amateur, the licensees can only communicate with other valid licensees. One person can acquire both radio licenses if necessary. Another thing to note is that GMRS can be accessed within a limited number of countries, whereas ham radio can be used just about all over the world. Let's talk about the communication and kind of function of both. 
A major difference between the HAM and GMRS radio systems is that GMRS is suitable for short distances only, whereas amateur radio can be used for long distances. You can also use it to communicate with somebody all the way across the world. Ham radio is used with a lot of repeaters that allow for higher power signal to be sent over such a long distance. On the contrary, the use of GMRS is rarely used with repeaters, which is why the range is much lower than ham. You should also keep in mind that GMRS is only for two-way communication between immediate family members and other licensees, whereas ham radio service is for general purpose and can be used to communicate with public safety services in the case of any emergencies. So, in the end, if you're wanting to set up a communication network for your friends and family for short distance use, such as camping, around the farm, or in an emergency, GR GMRS is a pretty viable option. On the other hand, if you're wanting to communicate over long distances and talk with people from all over, while pushing the limits of radio communication just for the sheer thrill of it, ham is your ticket. Either way, being familiar with basic radio communication and function can be very helpful in emergency situations and an interesting and educational hobby. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It really helps us out here at Cop Talks, and we would greatly appreciate it. If you want to help support the channel, consider using our affiliate links below for subscriptions, gear, and other items. Make sure to stay tuned for new content by enabling notifications. We generally post every Sunday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, and also drop other videos during the week on occasion. Thanks for watching, and remember to stay safe, stay healthy, stay alive, and I'll catch you in the next one.